Hey, Eden, I'm going to try to help you with this problem. Um, the question says, a train traveling 70 kilometers per hour left Jacksonville at 225. At 425, another train left Jacksonville on a parallel track traveling at 110 kilometers per hour. At these rates, when will the second train overtake the first? Now, something you have to know about me is that when I was a kid in elementary school and middle school, I was in gifted classes. That is not to say that I was smart. It's to say that I'm messed up now as an adult. So I always do little things on my math problems when I first see them to make sure my answer is reasonable because I never really trust that my answers are right. You may have that feeling too. So what I'm going to do is set up a little table for myself to get a general idea of where my answers are going to be. So I'm going to set a table up with times and then I'm going to look at the locations of the trains at those times. So this would be train 1 which is the one that travels at 70 miles an hour. This is train 2. It's the one that travels at 110. I'm going to go up by an hour each time because it's in kilometers per hour. At 225, neither train is doing anything. That's a boring story. But at 325, train 1 actually moves 70 kilometers. Train 2, nothing. At 425, train 2 is still sitting at the station finally getting started. Train 1, however, has already gone another 70 kilometers. At 525, train 1 goes up 70 again to give me 210. Train 2 goes up much faster, and it's already 110 kilometers away from Jacksonville at five, only an hour later. At 625, this one's up to 280, and train 2's already up to 220. It's catching up pretty quick. It's going on uh, one and a half times faster, a little more than one and a half times faster, so that's pretty good. Or 100 and a half, 100 and a half times the original speed. 725, this one's up to 350. This one's already up to 330. So it's looking very likely I'm looking for somewhere in this general range. At 825, this one's up to 420, but by then the second train has already passed the first train because it's 440 kilometers from the station. So the, the numbers on the T1 and T2 represent how far away the train is. And what I'm looking for is the point where they're both the same distance away because then they'll be right next to each other. So I know my answer is going to be somewhere between 725 and 825. That gives me some general idea of what I'm looking for in my question or my answer. I always do that kind of stuff first. That's optional. Now, the nice thing is they tell me that the trains start in a certain place and then they change. Anytime I have a, something that starts somewhere and changes, I'm probably going to do a graph. I'm also looking at a situation where if I plug in a number, I can get an output. Like I know that at 525, I can say that I'm in, uh, three hours from 225, so I can use that information to determine that I'm 210 away. Anytime you can plug in numbers and then get an output, you're probably looking at a graphing situation. So I'm going to use slope intercept form. Slope intercept form has lots of parts to it, four basic parts. M is the slope, which represents anything that talks about change. B is the y-intercept. The y-intercept, which that's the worst intercept ever. This is intercept, in case you need to remember how it's spelled. Um, y-intercept represents the starting point. Like every good story, it starts somewhere and then it goes somewhere. If a story starts somewhere and stays there, the story's terrible. And if it doesn't start anywhere, you have no idea what's changed and what hasn't. Um, now, the x value would be my input. That's what I'm going to plug in. It's also referred to as my independent variable, something that happens anyway. And in this case, the independent variable is going to be time. The trains are moving via certain times. Like I can say at 425, it's this, at 525. So time will go on whether these trains move or not. They could sit at the station forever. It's still going to be 625 eventually, even if both trains break down and they don't move. Um, the dependent variable, or my output, is my y. So what I'm going to do is figure out a way to tell a story about using an independent variable, where that variable starts, and how much it changes to tell me where it is. So in this specific case, I'm going to get rid of everything. In this specific case, my starting point is going to be a specific time. And I'm going to rephrase it in terms of hours away from that time. 
my change is going to be my speed. Because it's an, the speed that the train goes will tell me how much further or how less, it, how, you know, le less distance that it goes uh, compared to the other train. Like the 70 kilometer train in two hours will not go nearly as far as the 110, but they start at different times. My starting point in this case will be my zero hour. And I need to define what my zero hour actually happens to be. What time I'm going to make my starting point. Now I can start at 225 like the graph does. But I don't like to think of math that way. I like to think of math kind of like an action movie. You want to start your problem where all the action starts. If we started at 225, nothing is happening. Trains are sitting at a station. Even if we started at 325, one train's moving and the other one's not. And what a boring movie that would be. So you're like watching a James Bond movie. There's very few parts of James Bond where a train is moving and he's sitting somewhere in a station waiting for a train to go. So what I'm going to do is make my starting point my zero hour 425. So in my little parlance here, or my vocabulary, I'm going to say 425 is the same thing as zero hours from that time. So whatever my answer is, I need to add that many hours to 425 to get me to the point, because that's where the action starts, right? Now all I need to do is make a statement about both trains. I know that at 425, the first train, train 1, has already traveled 70 kilometers two times because it's 225 to 330 to 325 and then 325 to 425. So I can say my real starting point for that train is 140 miles or kilometers from the station. So I'm going to write plus 140. That's my starting point. I'm also knowing that it goes 70 kilometers per hour and X represents the number of hours from 425. So if I want to know how far this train is from the station at let's say 8 hours from 425, so whatever 425 and 8 hours, so 1225 in the morning, I'm going to say 8 hours from 425, so that would give me 700 kilometers away at 8 hours. That's why it's set up and it works that way. I can know what it is at 50 hours away if it's still continuing to travel. I'm assuming it probably won't be, but it could be. I would just plug 50 in and then it'd be 50 hours from 425. That's the really that's the hard part about this setup. Because if you type in 425 as your x or whatever, it makes it much more complicated. But we're just going to do hours from 425. So in our initial right at 425, it's 0 hours away. Or uh, my x would be 0. So my first train our second train, I'm sorry, is traveling 110 kilometers per hour. So I write 110x. Now, since we're setting 425 as our zero hour, or when everything starts, at 425, the train 2 has just left the station, so it hasn't really gone anywhere. So I'm going to put plus 0. That's my two setups. One will tell me that at 425, it's already 140 kilometers from the station, traveling at 70 kilometers per hour. The other one says, oh, well, at 425, I'm kind of still sitting in Jacksonville, but I'm going to move 110 kilometers per hour, so that's a good thing. What you'll likely do if you move forward with graphing calculator, I don't know if you're using one right now, I'm going to show you a general idea of what this looks like, is that you will flip up my calculator here, what you'll do is figure out the points where these two graphs intersect. As you can see, I've already been fiddling with the calculator a little bit to punch this in, which should save us a little bit of time, I would imagine. Now, I need to make sure that my range is set appropriately. So I set up my graph, they look exactly like they should in the equation, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to look at my window just to make sure I get an idea. X, remember, represents my hours. So I don't know why I would have it go much higher than about seven or eight hours, I would say. we In our table, we figured out it's probably about 825, so that's only four hours away. So seven is a reasonable amount. And I don't want to start in negative hours, so I'm going to set my X minimum at zero. However, the distance from the station you can be zero from the station. There's no, uh, there's not really an assessment for the idea of what happens if you're not even to Jacksonville yet, because it would be ridiculous to assume that. And then the Y maximum is how far we think they're going to be away. 500 is a reasonable amount based on the table, but I mean you could fiddle with it until you may have a graph that works. I'm just trying to, if you just have what it, the standard setup is, it probably won't graph in your calculator. It'll look a little weird. So let's graph it. As you can see, they cross basically right in here. 
and I'm going to look on the table just to see if I can get a general idea of where it is, which should match exactly the table I was making before. Right. Oops. Sorry about that. I kicked out of the table. I don't know what I was thinking. I was actually trying to erase this. And just like in our table, you can see that at about four hours away, this number starts to be ahead of this number, whereas before it was crossing. So somewhere between three and four, and you can figure it out if you want to, but the easiest thing to do is just get that idea that it's there. So this proves that that's where the intersection point is. Now, when you get to when you actually have this type of calculator, or if you already have it, that would be totally great, but I, I don't know if you do or not. You can actually find the intersection point. All you do is go into second and calc, and I'm going to go down to the point where it says intersection. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to enter a few more times. And it tells me that they are at the same spot. Remember, Y represents where they are, how far from the station they are, 3.5 hours away from my starting point. So I know that they finally crossed three and a half hours away from my starting point, which would be 4. 25. Now you can't do like the straight 3, uh, 25 plus 0.5 because you have to convert that 3.5 into hours, which is 3 hours, of course, and 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is look to see 3 hours and 30 minutes from 425. So I'm going to add uh, 3 hours, and that's going to give me 725. And then I'm going to add 30 more minutes to that, and I get 7. 55 as my final answer. Well, what the heck happens if you don't have a graphing calculator and you can't do it by graphing? Pretty simple. Now that you, if you can grasp that part of it, the idea of how to do it, it becomes much easier in terms of making it a graph. Now, what I'm looking for is for my y's to be the same because that would be the distance from the station. I want to know where the train 1 and train 2 are the same distance away. So I can say that my real goal here is to determine when y1 is equal to y2. Or uh, I'm going to put little symbols here. They don't necessarily mean points like you'd see in the slope formula, but it is what it is. I can rewrite this equation using substitution by saying that y1 is 70x plus 140. And that's equal to 110 x plus 0. So basically I'm saying at what point will train 1 and train 2 be the same thing away and x when I solve for it will tell me how many hours away from my starting point that I am. So I'm going to draw my line. This 0 thing goes away because I don't need it. I'm going to get all my x's on the same side. So I need to subtract 70. These cancel out. 110 minus 70 x is of course 40 x divide by 40 and x is equal to 3.5. So what I found out is that from my original starting point of 425 in the afternoon I need to travel 3.5 hours or 3.5 hours worth of train time to get to a point where they end up being in the exact same place or right next to each other. Now I just take this information again and convert it into three hours and 30 minutes. And why it's three hours and 30 minutes, in case I didn't mention it, is because 3.5 means three and a half. So three hours and then half an hour, which is 30 minutes, of course. I need to apply this information to 425 or away from 425. So this becomes 55, and this becomes 7. So I can make the reasonable assumption that at 7.55 p.m., the two trains meet at the same basic place, however far away from Jacksonville they are. I'm assuming they're going north, considering Jacksonville is where it is, unless they're talking about Jacksonville, Tennessee, but I'm, uh, maybe they are, I don't know. Is there one? Who knows? That's the basic idea. You're going to set up two basic graphs, and then you either want to set them equal to each other in terms of the y's being equal and then that makes the other sides equal or you can set them up as graphs find out their point of intersection and it gives you your final answer the hardest part I think about this is not doing the problem once you've set it up it's setting it up properly find a point that you can agree that both trains are moving 
find out where both trains are located at that point, and then just make the adjustment for how fast they're going or their speed, and I think you'll be fine. Now, if this wasn't helpful or it didn't give you the answer you're looking for or you need more explanation, if you can give me an idea of what you didn't get about it, I can make more video for this or try a different method or whatever. So I hope it was helpful, and I'm sorry if it wasn't.